Well, Merry Christmas! I get to say it for one more day. Today is the last day of Christmas, and so a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Now, you know, though, it's wonderful when you receive a gift when it's not Christmas, when it's not your anniversary, when it's not your birthday. Have you ever gotten a surprise gift? It's usually pretty awesome. I remember playing at home after school one afternoon, I must have been about six or seven, and a huge package came in the mail. It was from our Uncle Bob and Aunt Claudia, and it was filled to the top with Star Wars toys. Star Wars figures, bases, starships, you name it. We were so excited. You know, when I was in first grade, it was October, so it wasn't Christmas, it wasn't my birthday, it wasn't my brother's birthday. To the best of my knowledge, it wasn't Spoil Your Nephew's Day. And so this was a complete surprise. This was like my first grade equivalent of winning the lottery. And then I think, how much more astounded must Mary and Joseph have been when the wise men came with surprise gifts for little Jesus? I mean, what a shock. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, these were kingly gifts. And they came from great men who had journeyed miles and miles just to be there with them at Bethlehem. And why did they come? They came because they saw that star. They knew that something special, something momentous was taking place. The birth of a Messiah. The birth of a king. And you know what? They weren't disappointed. Gospel of Matthew says that when they came to the place of the star, when they came where Jesus lay, that they were overwhelmed with joy. And you know, in telling that story about the wise men, Matthew is telling us that Jesus didn't come just for Israel. He came for everybody. The wise men, they came from far away. They weren't from Israel. And this points to, and we're making that bridge from the season of Christmas to the season of Epiphany. And the season of Epiphany is about the revelation of Jesus of Christ to the whole world. And it gets started right here with the wise men who come from far away. And it points out that God isn't interested in just saving one little group, one special group. This story points to us that God wants to save everyone, the world over. Now about those gifts. Have you ever noticed that many times baby gifts tend to communicate something of the aspiration that the giver has for the baby's future? For instance, lots of babies get those college, little college t-shirts that say something like Yale question mark, question mark, or Sewanee question mark, question mark. You know, I hope you go to school here. And then I bet there are all kinds of babies right now getting little raven's onesies, right? Where they're hoping that these kids are going to grow up to be good Ravens fans, right? So yeah, sometimes, in fact often, those baby gifts say something about the hopes and dreams and aspirations that the friends and family have for the baby. So then, what must Mary be thinking when the wise men present those gifts to Jesus? You know, they come out of the treasure chest, you know, gold. And Mary think it's sweet. <laughs> we can make a down payment on a new donkey. We just had a bunch of miles on the last one. Put a bunch of miles on that donkey to get down to Bethlehem. Right? And then we got frankincense. Okay. Well, that's a little odd. But you know what? If we burn it in the baby's room, we won't have to change the diaper pail as often. <laughs> and myrrh. What the heck is myrrh? Joseph, did you register for that? <laughs> hey? So those gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they may sound like odd gifts for a baby. But the point in today's gospel is that those gifts point to the dreams that both the wise men and the gospel has for that baby, for that child. They point to who Matthew says that Jesus is. So first, gold. Gold is used here as a symbol for royalty. It points to Jesus as the true king in the line of David. 
not King Herod. Herod is an imposter. He's merely a strong man who opposes and oppresses the people. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that Herod orders his soldiers to commit a brutal act to hunt down Jesus. In other sources, historians have discovered that Herod even killed his own son. Herod is an oppressor. He acts contrary to the will of God. Matthew and the gifts of the wise men show us that it is Jesus who is the true king. It is he who will be the prince of peace. He is royalty. It is in the teachings and way of Jesus that we are to follow. Next, frankincense. Frankincense was offered as a gift of sacrifice to God in worship in the ancient world. So for instance, in the book of Malachi in the Old Testament, it says, From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place, incense, incense is offered to my name, a pure offering. So frankincense then was offered to God and sacrificed by the priest. And so the baby Jesus, given that gift of frankincense, is the true priest, the great high priest, who offers the ultimate sacrifice of himself on our behalf. And then this also points to Jesus as God. The wise men gave Jesus frankincense, which is a gift, as we said, offered to God. Jesus is God incarnate. God come down into the world. The Word made flesh who dwells among us. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Right now we've got that Christmas theme too, merging right into that Epiphany theme. God is with us. God alongside us in the world through thick and thin. God who knows the troubles of this world and is working to redeem it. Which brings us to myrrh. Myrrh points to Jesus as our Redeemer. Jesus who redeems us through His death on the cross. Indeed, in the Gospel of John, after the crucifixion, it says that Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee who was secretly following Jesus, and Joseph of Amarathia, who was also following Jesus, that they prepared Jesus' body with myrrh for His burial. So, myrrh being offered here points to Jesus' death. But it is a death that is a redemption. That tomb, he'll ultimately escape it. He'll defeat death and evil with his resurrection. So these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they point to who Jesus is. Jesus is the true king who shows us the way. Jesus is our great high priest who offers sacrifice on our behalf. Jesus is divine, God incarnate. And Jesus is our redeemer who saves the world through our death and resurrection. So yes, it turns out that these gifts are indeed quite appropriate for the wise men to bring to that makeshift baby shower in Bethlehem. The wise men brought gifts worthy of Jesus. Gifts who show who Jesus really is. Gifts that reveal that in Jesus' birth, the entire trajectory, the entire direction of the world and human history itself is changing and changed definitively with Jesus. Now, things are headed in the right direction. But think of the world before Jesus as being like a traveler without a compass. Yet trying to find its true north, but yet without direction, continuously turning further and further south. But then with the birth of Christ, with that star that the wise men followed, and with everything that came after, Jesus' great teaching, his death, his resurrection, now, now the world is set in the right direction. The world has been given its compass. Jesus reveals the world's true north, which is ultimate salvation, a new creation, and rescue. God will make everything new. The life of Jesus with his birth, death, resurrection, and beyond reveals to the world that salvation is coming. Death, poverty, sin, broken relationships, war, cruelty, evil, indeed death itself, are on borrowed time. 
And we hear that, yet we still know that the world isn't as it should be. But the message of our faith is that it will be. And that by following the light of Christ in our lives, as the wise men followed the star, we'll be headed in the right direction. By following Christ, we will be in line with the direction that the world is heading. We have a compass in Jesus, and our faith will lead us on. So that when you're sad, or in pain, or afraid, you can continue on and follow that light of Christ. Regardless of what's happening in your own life, perhaps regardless of what you may see in the news, you can continue on that long journey following the light of Christ. And God assures us that our journey will not be in vain. And as we wait for that day when God makes all things new, while that journey continues, we have a call in the meantime. And that's to throw all the good that we can at this world. God calls you, God calls me, God calls us to let him work through us to make this world a better place. So give some surprise gifts. Whatever you can do, wherever you see something that is wrong in this world, don't meet it with despair or revenge or hard feelings. Throw all the good at it you can. Follow Jesus. Meet the fallen things of this world with love. Help the poor. Give generously if you need to. Apologize and ask for forgiveness. And this isn't easy, so then when all else fails, pray. Pray to God to ask for that strength to love others. To meet those hard situations with goodness. And you can even out now ask, God, Who or what in this world needs a surprise gift from me? What can I offer? Pray that prayer and then listen. God knows of a gift that you can offer. A gift that will bring a little more light into this world. Yes, the world hasn't come to its ultimate salvation. Not yet. But the world has been given its direction in Christ Jesus. And each day is traveling towards that true north. The goodness, the justice, the truth of God in Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, our Priest and our King, shall eventually reign supreme on earth as in heaven and reign for all time. God assures us that our journey and the journey of the church will not be in vain. That day will come when all comes to completion and there will be true, complete and utter salvation. So give surprise gifts. Follow Jesus as Priest, King and Redeemer. Keep going on the journey. Follow that star and that light that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Merry Christmas.